In the middle of all the noise and conversation, I found a quiet spot on a bench tucked away in a corner. The sound of laughter filled the room. Suddenly, everything stopped, and I found myself in a dark, cozy space that felt like a waiting room. A huge black curtain like the ones in fancy theaters opened up in front of me. Its silky feel and deep, dark color made me feel safe and calm right away. I could still faintly hear the noise of the busy scene behind me, but I was more interested in the secrets that lay ahead. I was amazed by what I saw when I opened the curtain and went outside. I could see beautiful green grass and a clear blue sky everywhere I looked. The water in the small stream next to me was calm and moving slowly, making small waves. The way the grass met the water made it look like there was a well-kept garden there. As I took in this stunning scenery, I saw some fuzzy forms across the stream. The huge amount of energy they seemed to have drew me to them. Although I couldn't see them clearly, I could strongly feel them. It confused me for a moment, but then I looked back at the people on the other side of the ocean. I decided to go up close and entered the stream. It was nowhere near 20 feet wide and only a few feet deep. I couldn't wait to meet them and feel their vibe. The water relaxed and refreshed my feet. I slowly made my way deeper into the stream until I was up to my ankles in water. The way it looked spinning around my feet was beautiful. After being about six or seven feet away, it dawned on me that the shapes were people standing across the stream. I knew they were people even though I couldn't see their faces very well. Their strong energy drew me in, and when I got into the stream, I wanted to join them even more. Hearing noises. It happened that I heard something strange one day. Up to that point, nothing very interesting had been heard. It had been quiet. After that, though, it happened quickly. During my attempt to cross to the other side, this sound stopped me. That sound wasn't like any other sound you can hear. It seemed to be talking to my spirit without being audible and echoing deep inside me. Being asked, where are you, by a voice in my head, insightful and strong. What it sounds like, as a 19-year-old, I had to think, I'm at that saint in New York. As soon as I stopped thinking, a lot of noise started coming from everywhere. It was loud music and people talking. It was too much, like my mind was full of a hundred different thoughts that were all fighting with each other. I remember feeling like something wasn't quite right, but then just as quickly as it had come on, the chaos ended and a beautiful silence took its place. As I got back to the stream, I wanted to keep going and leave all that noise behind. Proceeding. Overcoming was my clear goal. I carefully measured the depth of the creek as I stepped into it. As I waded in, I could see the people on the other side getting closer, and I could tell they were interested in me. They seemed to be aware that I was there and were watching me closely. I wanted to be with them at that point. It was the love in my heart that pushed me forward. I was ready to move on, but the soft voice kept asking, Where are you? How I caught up with the saint. In a grumpy voice, I replied, I met the saint in New York. Suddenly, I was back in that noisy place, lying on the ground with other people around me showing worry. Persons were stating concerns such as, I don't believe he is breathing, and should we call an ambulance? But even with all the chaos, one thing was clear. I really wanted to go to people on the other side of the stream. I was back in the water, not too close to them, when the war stopped. They were calling my name and urging me to join them. I wasn't sure if I could see their faces, but I knew they knew who I was. Many men and women crowded around me and held out their arms to greet me. Out of the blue, I saw my Aunt Pat and my old college friend Lynn from Georgia in the crowd. Someone or something in the air made me feel drawn to them like a magnet. I heard a strong voice that sounded more like a worried dad giving a last warning than one of anger as I greeted them with a raised hand. Where are you? As I said, I already told you I'm at the Saint in New York. I felt a little annoyed. In the blink of an eye, I was taken somewhere else, hidden behind a thick, black screen that made me feel more like love than fear. There was a tall figure behind me that made me feel calm and safe. The thing that was talking to me told me that its light was too much for me to handle, even though I didn't dare look at it directly. In that area of trust and love, the being's name didn't matter much. The message was simple. John, you have to avoid staring at me directly because the light I give off will overwhelm you.
I could tell right away that the thing had no gender and that there were secrets to be found. An artistic move had it lift one arm, showing a thin hand with thin fingers. I all of a sudden found myself looking at a real place with real people and real events like a movie set. With one finger, the thing said, remain vigilant. It let me watch the action happen instead of giving me background information. It was high school, and I was with friends, laughing and jesting. But the mood changed a lot when I turned away. My friends started talking badly about me in public, which caused problems between us. Every turn could be happy or crazy, depending on which way I was faced. The lesson about human nature was sobering because it showed how important it is to watch out for our natural desire to hurt each other. I realized that humility was the best way to protect ourselves from the lies of the human tongue. I took part in the event and watched it with interest, learning from it as it went by quickly and leaving its mark. The second vision came true. It took place where the saint was in New York City, which is where I was. I wasn't taking part this time. I was just watching. It was a strong command to get rid of darkness and show hidden truths, along with an invitation to watch and learn. My guide slowly raised its finger to tell me to join the dance floor. A lot of lights suddenly came on and lit up the big dance floor, making the scene into a fascinating show. Soaring highs and rumbling lows came from the speakers, making everyone in the room want to move to the same beat. The light from my guide shone on each dancer who had made their own space and was focused on the moment. People who were in the bright light were scared, and screams and cries quickly drowned out the music. The third picture, a beautiful one of happiness, appeared in front of me. At the start of 2020, I was finally able to fully accept this idea as a part of my own path. After the third discovery, my guide tapped me on the shoulder again. The happy end of my journey is marked by this image. In this vision, I saw the full beauty of a stage made of gold with steps on either side. I was ready to walk across the platform with other people in front of me. It had taken me 30 years to fully understand how important the thing I would be praised for was, but the memory was still fresh. I wondered every day what this scary and strange scene meant. Its real value and humble reflections on human nature have been long-term partners in the lineage of visions. I stopped in the middle of the stage and looked to my left at an important time in the graduation program. When everyone sang a peaceful song together, there was a moment of peace and beauty that I can't explain. I stopped to listen to something that made me feel humble. It reminded me of Jesus' simple but profound words, It is finished. Jesus was one of the best teachers in history. This is where my whole journey came together. As an end to the vision, it's comforting to know that everything that happens before graduation day reinforces the idea that it is finished. When I woke up, I felt calm. I couldn't remember who helped me, but we were leaving the place in 30 minutes. There was no need for medical help. When I stepped outside, the world looked very different. It took me almost a year to get over the fact that I could feel other people's pain. It came to them in the form of a dream the next year. I dreamed that out of nowhere, a bright white light appeared and ran towards me. I woke up right before the light got all the way around me. I thought my body would glow, but it didn't. When I stood in front of the glass and felt love all around me, I thought of what had happened. 